Hey everybody, Skylar again. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Fache 450. Now Fache is one of my favorite lock companies. They make, to this day, they still make incredibly intricate mechanical locks that uh, are humorously expensive, hard to come by, uh, and just gorgeous. Just reading their patents is a real pleasure. What I have in front of me are a pile of Fache 450s, I think um, that maybe the second version eventually went by 480, something like that. And there are a bunch of American Locksport folks that actually have some of these locks kicking around. Uh, maybe five or six years ago, there was an old Fache locksmith, an American-based locksmith, who was uh, either going out of business or just selling off an old collection. And so a bunch of these hit the market at once, so the prices stayed relatively low. Unfortunately, at the time, I was never able to afford a housing for them, which were going dramatically higher. The guy would sell a bunch of the cores for very little money and then uh, like a housing or two at a time for hundreds of dollars. So unfortunately, these are all without their housing, but they're still a very cool lock. You can still see exactly how they operate. The basic idea behind the lock is that you have these I-beam shaped keys with the cuts on all four of the blades. And each of them are uniquely cut. There's a small ridge along the top, which helps align us to the keyway, which is sort of this stick figure shape. And as we insert the key into the lock, we get to see these levers moving back and forth across the sidebar channel until they're all in alignment. And we are completely clear to drop our sidebar into place there. And of course the opposite side is clear as well. So the Fache locks were also one of the first I ever saw that had regional sidebar coding. And I discovered this actually out at a conference with a friend. We got a couple of our locks mixed up. So this is the one that we just opened. It opens on both sides. And here's another one. So not complete on this side, completely clear on this side. So what's happening here is that every lock in this series uh, sold in this region or to whatever company um, asked for this uh, keying, one side of the key is exactly the same for every lock of this batch. And then the opposite side of the key will be unique. So if you had a large facility and you wanted to get your own uh, you know, half of the key cut that nobody else would have cut the same, all of your locks would have one half the same and the other half unique. So just kind of neat to see this very clear example of regional sidebar coding, open there, not open there. And then on this bad boy, of course, open on both sides. So we'll pull one of those apart uh, so that we can look at the interior of it. There's not a huge amount else to say. The, these locks were briefly popular. You can see articles about them in Popular Mechanics and the like from, I think, the mid to late 70s, maybe early 80s. Um, but I'll check that and we'll put up one of the ads. And they were offered as a high security option. They never caught on in particular in America, but there were certainly a couple of locksmiths that were selling these as one of their high security products. So every now and then, you know, checking eBay or uh, old antique stores or, or whatnot, you can come across them pretty affordably. And it's just a very cool lock to add to your own collection. All right, so let's uh, pull one of these apart. I have my handy dandy bicycle spoke here so we can knock one of the pegs out and have a look at what's going on inside. Okay, using my handy bicycle spoke, I am going to go ahead and press out the retaining pin. Uh, I've actually cut this spoke just long enough to take the place of the retaining, the retaining pin. And so now I'm going to just somewhat haphazardly pull this out until there we are. So here we have our gears. We have three of them. We have our retaining pin. And I'm just going to use this small screwdriver to point out some of the features here. So we do have our true gates, the large ones that we're seeing here, here, and here. We also, on either side of those, have false gates, false notches that 
when picking the sidebar would get caught in. This isn't a pin so much as a cap for the spring. Let's separate them here. So the spring goes into that cap, and then the tail of the gear touches the cap, and this is what continues to spring the gears back into their at-rest position. Here we have our retaining pin, of course, and then the ball bearing is what the key in the lock will actually be touching. So the ball bearings ride along the ridges in the key, orienting the gears into their correct positions. So that's the Fichet 450. Uh, again, one of the one of the, just the clever locks in my collection. I love how much they pack into such a tiny footprint uh, and the Fichet company as a whole just do really cool work. Always on the lookout for more of their locks at prices that I can afford. All right, thank you all so much, and I will see you again next week.